And why are we in Southern New Jersey? Well, we're here visiting several restaurants to enjoy some fine Portuguese cuisine, but more importantly, talk baseball with the owner. Welcome to Section 420, Talking Yankees. We're here in Summit, New Jersey, a little far away from the Bronx, at Seven Restaurant with restaurant owner Arsenal Faria. Did I say it right? Yes, it did. Thank God. I know. Now, uh, unfortunately, you're a Mets fan, so you know <laughs> I, it, it's hard for me to sit next to you. So that's why we have this. You know, we have this, this distance. The distance between us, yeah, so no, we don't get close. But, enough. but hopefully, yeah, hopefully we get we get a little closer. So uh, tell me about Seven Restaurant. Uh, it's family owned. I opened a couple of months ago, and I always wanted to open a Portuguese Brazilian restaurant cuisine. Mm. Always been a dream of mine. Uh, family, it's always had restaurants my whole life. Oh, really? So my grandfather, when he went to Brazil in the 50s, and we came here in the 80s, we opened up uh, bakeries in Newark, New Jersey, and I just wanted to bring the, the tradition to Summit when I moved here about five years ago. So, you know, my dream came true, and we're here. And tell us about the name, like, Sarah Restaurant. What does that actually mean? Uh, it actually means mountain, like a summit. My mom is Portuguese, and she's from the northern side of Portugal, and it's called Serra da Estrela. So that's where they ski, and, you know, I had to go with that name just to, mm. for uh, my mom's. Do they have, they have snow up there, actually? Yes, they do. Oh, I did not know so that. They, yes. So now, what actually year did you come to the States? Uh, 84. 84. So that's when I, I think it was Doc Gooden's first year, right? Yes, it was. Now, but before did you, um, you came to America, did you have any idea about baseball, the Mets, the Yankees, or anything? Uh, no. The Brazil, they do follow baseball because there's a big Japanese community, so they brought it with them. And we will, it's a soccer country, we'll see them playing, you know, a crazy sport with a glove and a little ball, we kind of make fun of them, like, what are they doing? Yeah. But, you know. Should be kicking the ball, you know, not true. Just throwing it. And, but when I came to the States, you know, I just loved the game and I just picked it up right away and been a baseball fan, you know, for 36 years now and a Mets fan. Now, you're, yeah, so you're right. Now, the Mets weren't like, I guess, I guess you know, just on the cusp of that championship, but you always had, you know, I mean, did you at least know about the Yankees in Brazil, or this no. is totally off the map? This is totally off the map. This is the 80s, you know, this is prior to all the, the social and all the online and everything else, so there's really no, you, you didn't Don't know anything about it. it. So, you know, I came to find out here. And, like, the Yankees had great players in the 80s that I, you know, idolized some of them, even Mattingly and Winfield and Ricky Anderson, but, you know, I was, I had to be a Mets fan. What, what, but what drew you to the Mets? Why did you, why'd you go down that evil path? <laughs> uh, my two favorite players of all time, Keith Hernandez and Daryl Strawberry. And just like them and just figure that? No, yeah, it was, well, they were, you know, the talk of town. And back then, baseball was different, you know, it was easier to, to kind of love the players and get close to them. I think there was more of a, you know, like a closeness between fans and players, you know, the, there is now, now it's, there's like a bigger gap, I guess, because of the money and everything else. Yeah. They were more human back there, back Probably. then. And it's funny, because now we have like these things like, you know, uh, Twitter, Instagram, you can actually directly contact a player, yet, like you said, it's, it's you know, you back, still a distance, you, you know? know. Back in the day, they would play a game and go drink beers in a bar with the fans, you know, especially the 86 Mets, oh, you know, I mean, Keith Hernandez and Strawberry and Gooden and all those guys. So. All right, so now you're a Mets fan. I'm not going to hold it against you. So now Shea Stadium, I mean, do you remember your first experience going to a Mets game? Um, yes. Uh, have... My dad took me 86, probably the, the year they won. Upper deck, you know, barely see anything because it's, it's a big stadium, Shea Stadium. So it's almost like the Section 420 butt of Shea Stadium. Yes. I and wouldn't remember which section. I know it's the, the side that... Uh, did Tommy Agee hit a home run up there? Yes, in the upper so left field. Yeah. Funny so. enough, um, it was back 93-94 at a Yankee game. Now I'm in the bleachers, the cheap seats. For some whatever reason, Tommy Agee's in the bleachers. He's got some people distancing himself from there, but we're all getting autographs. I actually got a Tommy Agee autograph. That's nice. I don't, I don't know if he was doing some promotion or something, but he was in the Yankee same bleachers. But yeah, he hit that, that moon shot. Yeah. Uh, le it was upper deck left, so it was probably left field. I know, I know there was like a spot marked uh, you know, where it hit. It, it was far. Yeah. Now, now, did you get any opportunities to go to any Yankee games in the 80s, or? Uh, the, my first game was against the White Sox, I always remember, too. Um, Sammy Sosa hit two home runs when he was prior 
to the Sammy Sosa of you know the Cubs years. Oh, so, so it might be talking big, about that like the nineties then, maybe early nineties. Early nineties. Yeah. Probably the first time the first game I ever went to Yankee Stadium. And I wasn't able to persuade you to switch allegiances? No. No, it wasn't was good enough. Too late already. Mm. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean my my parents um, it was more my uncle guy that got me into the Yankees. I, I remember there's some images in the 80s, like going to some Yankee games, but really in terms of like memory, I probably don't remember till again, 93, 94, just when I started, you know, getting into that. Um, so now I'm just, you know, just looking at this offseason for the Mets, I, I guess the big story is going to be they're going to have some new ownership. Get the Steve Cohen guy. Wow. I mean, and it's for, you know, the whole thing with, you know, uh, you know, the original owners, like, you know, Bernie Madoff sort of fleece them, and people are like, oh, why are they being thrifty? But obviously, there's money issues because, you know, they're willing to sell a team, so. There's always money issues with the Wilpons after that, but. Yeah. yeah, so, but I think a lot of it had to do with the Bernie Madoff. They obviously covered it up. So, they get this guy, Cohen's going to spend money now. So, I mean, as a Mets fan, like, how does that just make you feel? Well, it makes me feel good because, you know, I'm tired of being second to the Yankees. And that's the problem with the Mets. So, it's second to the Yankees because of the money. But. You know, hopefully he comes in and not only signs players, as you know, as a Yankee fan, just spending money and signing free agents doesn't, you know, automatically makes you a winner. You know, you need to still invest wisely. You know, as, as long as the players that we need and it's, you know, like the Yankees just signed Cole exactly. to a the record, Crazy. it's a great player. <laughs> and I think it's worth it. You know, not some, because the Mets also known, even when they did spend money, to give money out to players that were past their prime or... You know, they were done already, and you just always exploded in their faces, you know, the, the Jason Bays of the world. Yeah, they've had, I mean, they've had some good ones. But like, I think Beltron, who is you know, now your new manager, I think that was a good signing because at first he was, he a little hurt a little bit, but, like, if you think the value, I mean, it was always hitting 40 home runs every year. It was a year. good value. It was Gold Glove center field. I think that was a good deal. I think Delgado was good for the most part. Um, you, know, when I, you know, but, again, Bay he had some bad issues. But, yeah, I mean, just, uh, I guess you could see as a Met fan, I could, it could just drive me nuts. Like, well, I'm a Giants fan, so I guess imagine, like, if the Jets were spending money in Giants, would it was just like, what, what are you yeah, doing it's, here? It's tough. It's, you know, it's, like I said, it's tough being in the same city as the Yankees. You know, they win all the time. It's, you know, they're the Yankees. Mm. They're the, I'm the, loving this. <laughs> now, in terms of uh, just, you know, the signings you folks, and I, it's added Rick Porcello to a one-year deal. Which I think that's you know it's a good pickup for the Mets. Here's a guy who well, he threw a no hitter once. Even that's one game doesn't mean anything. Former world champion, you know, only 30 years old, and I just think that bolsters rotation now because now you got Degrom at the top. You got you know um, uh, Syndergaard, Syndergaard, and Mats. It's, it's now you throw a great rotation actually. Yeah, and I mean, you have you know, and he's a hometown guy too, Porcello. So exactly, he and went so, to Center Hall, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, he's yeah. a New York guy. So yeah, you know, I think that's a great pickup for the Mets. And I think you know, last year they just got off to a, a terrible start, and, was, and they did the catch up. And you know, they made it a little interesting, you know, in August, September. So, but I think this season, you know, with Beltron, I think there'll be some optimism there. I think they'll get off, they won't get off as bad of a start. And I think you know, you folks are gonna have a good season now. You, obviously, you're in the same division as the, the champion, you know, Nationals. Uh, so know, it's gonna be tough. Mine, minus their. MVP All Star. Yeah, right that's now, who. So. so he's gone, but he's still gonna have Strasburg. Good, but that's still gonna be tough. But um, now let's just talk about what, what are the other competitor now, the Phillies. Now, of course, uh, you know you got some former Yankees there. You got Girardi, former Yankee manager going there, and now Didi Gregori. So, you know, with the Yankees, I got kind of said it on some previous episodes. I felt like they would want to bring him back because he's just a good personality clubhouse guy. But they weren't forced to. I mean, you have Gleyber Torres, who's a natural shortstop. So, all right, you're paying him nothing. Why don't you just put him at shortstop? You got DJ LeMay with second base. Didi's just kind of like, you know, you the love the guy. He's odd man out. So, now he only signed like a one year deal, which I was kind of surprised. I figured you get a, it's a one year for 14 million. So, I was oh. surprised. It's a smart move, though, because he goes to Phillies. That's like a band box over there. He, oh, he's he going to hit like. have like an awesome, you know, season, and he's going to get a lot more money next year. No, that's probably what it is. And, and, and like, maybe even Postel's doing it as well. Just get one and, year, and prove Waka yourself. Too, yeah. And yeah, just prove yourself, and then you got unload. So you know there could be an opportunity where Didi could come back at some point. We'll see what happens like that. But of course, you know the main dish, so to speak, is Garrett Cole. And you know, kind of first, I was like, even though it's not my money, I'm always like, I'm always weird with these long contracts. But once it actually happened, I kind of thought, you know what, it makes sense. You know, you're getting someone. You have to, especially the Yankees. I mean, it's out there. You get it, especially there were couple of games away from the World Series and that's the difference. Yeah. You, know, you get the best pitcher in baseball that you know took them out of the playoffs actually. But more or less, yeah. And the, you, right away you still got the same team, a great bullpen, you know, great offensive team and you know, you, you're right back in the playoffs. Exactly. And it, not that it's cuz I think um, you know, it's almost like similar like CC back in like 2009. Like you getting a guy, all right, 29, 30 years old, still young. 
you know how it's going to be. It's going to be, you're going to get five great years, and then on the back end, the contract is always, you get three years in the main, but maybe, maybe he's like a Verlander who could pitch great into yeah. his, his early, thir his late 30s. So I like, you know, at first, again, I'll say maybe go off the Madison Bumgarner instead, but then like once the deal happened, it kind of warmed up to it. I was like, yeah, you know what? I like it's, this. It's a good deal. And I think what happened a lot of it is, I, I just think they're not confident yet in, in Severino. He was supposed to be the ace. He just, yeah. he was hurt all last year. I don't want to judge him and too much. the playoffs didn't, you know, help yeah, him yeah, yeah. cause. Yeah, I mean, he had the one good game against Minnesota. But again, he's like, he's like a five-inning pitch. You need, like, you need an ace. You need someone to go out there like eight innings, just shut the And that's what this Yankee team's been missing for the past three years. So you get him, and you're at a point now like, all right, if you don't win, I mean, like I said, even if you lose the, the last two, three years of his contract, it kind of works something you, out. But if you win a couple of World Series, it's worth it. No, you, you, no. you to totally take it. So. And, and, and in terms of another back-end contract, uh, Yoas Cespedes looks like now they're kind of restructuring his deal a little well, bit. Well, from what I've you know, seen, it's, they're going to try to forfeit the whole deal because he got hurt. Non-baseball activity with the horseback and all that, and they kind of just kind of broke even in a deal that, look, we don't want to take everything from you, so just... You know, meet us halfway right. through, and we'll pay you. I think it's ten million, from what I read. Yeah, because we're supposed so to get like twenty nine million. million yeah. So, no, it's 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 fair if you look at it. You know, you need to work to get paid. So he hasn't done anything since he signed his big contract. Yeah, that was like the weirdest ago. thing. Like when they did resign him, I know a lot of people. I think you had to resign him at the time because he, he got you to the World Series. He played his butt off. Now I know he has his like he has his moments in the outfield. We just doesn't hustle maybe or a ball goes over his head I mean you're gonna have that little bit like just players like that exactly yeah you know uh, you know brain skips yeah. you know there's another word with it I can't use it but well, I actually probably could use it but like that's what he is but like you know I they made the right move in resigning him and you know but it's just like again these are freak injuries it just you know they have in my baseball history the best two and a half months I've ever seen a player have mm. when he came to the Mets over yeah I mean it never was just, saw it, it was amazing it was like everything you know, no, he literally hit everything. carried them to the World was, Series. Usually, you know, a player carries somebody for a week, two weeks, three. He just put it in them in their his back, and it was two and a half months of, you know, hitting. And like I said, it was worth it. I, yeah. you had to give him the money. You got the trip to the World Series. All right, so now you know, make this interesting. Mets, Yankees. Let's talk about some of the, the history of the Subway Series. And I remember that first game. Do you remember it? Yeah. Dave Malecki, shutout, six nothing. Yep. It was really like the first game, such a big buildup, and the Yankees came out just like flat. I think well, they had like three hits, something yeah. like that. And it was just funny because it was Dave Malek, you know, who would have thought? You know, it's, it was, as Met fans, we, especially that 97 season, you know, the, the mid 90s, kind of early, we didn't have much going on, you know. At Todd Hundley and a couple of other players that. Well, was just before they got Piazza, I remember that. They were yeah. like building towards something. Yeah, Steve Phillips and uh, Bobby Valentine came in and they were building that team, the, the 2000 World uh, Playoffs. Game, I remember, I think it was the game after that. I think it was a, so that Malinke game, I think it was a Friday night. I think the Saturday night game, Saturday, I can never remember. Saturday night game was actually, um, it was that night, it was David Wells. I can't remember, the Yankees won like 12 to 4. But somebody, I remember Bernard Gilkey. He had like a three-run home run off of Wells. I remember that. But and then, but the Yankees won the game. The 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 uh, Sunday game. The last one was David Cohn. He actually he same what Malecki did to the Yankees. Cohn did to the Mets. He just absolutely shut the Mets down. The Yankees. Were, so I think the Yankees took that first series technically. I think if I remember. Yeah. And then I, I just want to remember game one. So I kind of you know let the have, let the rest go. Have easier for the last two. <laughs> no, I, I, I totally understand that. Especially David Cohn kind of pitching against us kind of, you know, hurts a little. Yeah, that's weird. And actually, and, and then the uh, same happened, I think it was two, the 2000 team. Uh, the, Yankees, the Yankees had, um, you know, Doc Good in the 96, of course, and 97. I don't, I don't think, obviously, Doc was involved in the 97 one, uh, he didn't pitch in those games. But I think in 2000, Doc actually came back to the Yankees. I don't know if I meant for a very brief period. I think it was the, the doubleheader. He pitched the Yankee Stadium, and we played uh, at Shea the, the, ga the, day the game it, it was, after? It was switch, actually. Yeah. It was the, the, day, the day game was at Shea. It was 2000. Okay. Day game was at Shea. Doc Gooden pitched it, won. The night game was at Yankee Stadium. And that was actually, that was the night I think uh, Piazza got hit in the head. If, or, or I'm not, uh, that, I think that's the night that he hit the two-run the two run home run or the grand slam. And then something he like did that. get hit afterwards, yes. Yeah, something like by, yeah, remember, that. Was the day. Clemens. Yeah, a little yeah. bit of... The subway history. Yeah, we, you, you never know if, like, if that was on purpose. I, again, I always thought the whole thing with Clemens Piazza, I, I don't think he's literally trying to kill somebody. He probably did throw right. near his head, but he, obviously he probably lost a little control. And well, just, Clemens like, was very competitive. 
you know, it was just jacked up. And like I said, it's back in the days, this would be totally normal. You hit a home run and you kind of show yeah. off, I'm going to hit you. You know, we became a, a society in baseball that you can't do that anymore. It's, you know, looked upon, you know, frowned yeah. upon. So it's really, but I was thoroughly okay with it. Yeah, it is. It's a competitive sport. Yeah, I mean, two competitive people, especially Clemens. Like, you, know. you don't want to see someone hitting the head like that, but that was always the thing. And, but I always felt like the, the retaliation against Clemens, I mean, I, I guess I don't think they ever hit him. They kind of, um, no, they had that left, um, they kind of switched. The left-hander, Sean yeah, Estes, Estes, yes, that was threw it. against him. And he actually hit a home run off of remember him in that, that game. I remember that. And, you know, that's that's always remember. That's the best way to get back at a player. There yeah, you. I think what happened was he. I think he might have thrown one pitch near his feet, just kind of scuff him a little bit. Yeah, just give him send ball. the message. Exactly. Send like, the message kind a little of, bit. Kind of, you know, pull his. But then he rocked one off a of climb. And, yeah. and, and and just talking about you know just some meta accomplishments, getting great great pitches. Um, Joe McEwing hit that big home run against Randy Johnson. Yeah. It's like out of nowhere. Like give this masterful pitcher. Actually, we had a left-handed reliever from Korea that hit a double off of him. Uh, remember that? I guess Some, yeah. Yeah, but we actually won that game. I always remember that. Actually, I will also remember uh, Matt Franco. He had off a of hit off Mariano, Mariano Rivera. Rivera. That was that Saturday w. game. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, to win the game, to win in uh, extra innings. Yeah, I mean that was the, it was on Fox Saturday Baseball. Yeah. I mean, it was a back and forth game. I think like Paul O'Neill hit two home runs. Um, Piazza crushed one off the Ramiro Mendoza. He had like two home runs. Yankees took a lead, I think late. But I don't, I don't know. If Mo gave up both runs. It was a tied game, but I remember, I remember that. Matt I, Fran- I know Matt Franco hit the, the, the game winning. I think it was an infield hit or a single. Right. So. so what do we got here? Uh, traditional Portuguese sausage. Usually it's served in flames in a traditional Portuguese dish. Uh, so it's being done as they serve because it's still flames here, as you can see. Uh, so you let it flame a little bit for the flame, yeah. And you kind of just wait until the flame dies out, and then you eat it. Oh, pretty simple. Uh, yeah, it's pretty. Thank, Thank you. Sir. Yeah. Let's move this over here a little, so we don't want to ring it in. There you go. Now you said you're from Brazil. Yes. So what made you go, you know, open up a, a Portuguese place versus like a Brazilian restaurant? Well, we also have uh, traditional Brazilian dishes, but my mother, like I said, she is Portuguese. Let me tell that. She is Port- she was born in Portugal and went to Brazil in the 50s. So we do have this history of Portugal food-wise with us, you know, growing up. And it's a very traditional, like, codfish, salty... Uh, fish and it's just I think it's a wonderful European cuisine and I just wanted to bring it to you know a restaurant to in summit since I li- I've been here five years already and, and really there's nothing close and I just wanted to bring my culture to them you know so they could also taste what I have been raised to it so. mm-hmm. thanks we're driving around yeah, I see Italian restaurants like that, but no Portuguese. So yeah, it definitely stands out. So you say the Portuguese cuisine is more fish-based. Yes. Where Brazil is more meat-based. Meat-based, yes. So, you know, Portuguese from octopus to codfish to you know anything that's they do have a lot of um, meat dishes also, but they're mainly mainly known for fish. Brazilian, as you know, there's even the rodízio that they bring out and they carve the meat for you at the table. Yeah. That's what they're known for. And that's, you know, big and meat. That's the, yeah, I mean, that's the place that I, every time I, every time I eat Brazilian, it's like those places where you, you flip the thing, green, yeah, red, like, you know. If you're done, if you're not done. Exactly. And yeah. they, so even if it's on red, they still bring, they want to bring food to your yeah. table. You're like, stop, stop. Yeah, man. it's it's very, like I said, it's it's very tradition, very good, but, you know, I think Portuguese cuisine, it's a little more, you know, fine. It's a little better. It's it's a better taste, a better. It's a lot of based olive oil. It's cooked in a lot of olive oil, and so the the seasoning it's it's better mm. than than you know Brazilian wise. Oh, grab my little pieces. See, you can't get this at Yankee Stadium. Well, maybe open up a venue. That's shop about to- safe. They want me to go there and open up a venue. I will. And we could have fine Portuguese cuisine at Yankee Stadium also. Yeah. That's why 
Definitely Pinel we say between the Yankees and the Mets. I mean, if you go to City Field, I think the food, they did a better job. They have I mean, Yankees say they got some good options. You got Johnny Rockets, now they opened up a Benny Hanna. I think that, but overall the food, I would say, that's the only credit I give to the Mets over the Yankees is that. It's the food. The food. They, this, you go out there in that center field, it's like everything and just. I know. It's like I said, I love the food there. The, it's the, the, I'm about to say Shea Stadium. Still not I still to do it, it too. City I, Field, but. Like Giant Stadium, I don't call it Melaf, I still call it Giant Stadium because, you know, whatever. I was, actually, I was actually sad to see that they did rebuild a, a new Yankee Stadium. I think they should have just kind of worked around that one because yeah. it's, it's Yankee Stadium. It's, you know, it's like Fenway, Fenway Park, Park it's Wrigley Field. Some traditional stadiums should stay the same. They should have not really just, you know, build it. But they did, so, you know, what are you going to do? So what's coming out next? Uh, it should be, if I'm not mistaken, let me see. Yes, it's traditional codfish cakes. It's mm. fried. It's like the salty codfish I was telling you about. Uh, it's done into like a dough, mixed up with the codfish and potatoes, and fried. And you mm. just eat it with uh, hot sauce and lemon. Here you go, sir. Thank you. Put it there. I'm an animal, I just use my hands. Yes, it's like a bit very traditional. Like I said, it's the codfish that they, it's, their cuisine is based on. There's probably 300, over 300 codfish dishes. Really? In the Portuguese cuisine, you know, from every, you, know, you could think of, they, they, they make. Well, something like a, I don't know, like a codfish croquette. Yeah. Give it a shot here. Go ahead. I'll put mine with hot sauce. It is croquetty. Yeah. There you go. And codfish is such a salty fish that when we get it, you have to put it in water for three days and change the water every two, three hours to take all the salt out. It'll yeah. be like impossible to eat it. Yeah, cause I, I like some you know, I'll go to like Key Food or Sea Town. I'll get like a you know like a five dollar thing of codfish. I'll chop it up and I'll put it in like in a tomato soup thing. But yeah, it's always very salty. Yeah, it's very so. If you don't do it, it's gonna be impossible to eat it, mm. especially all the season that goes in it. But so this is a couple of the Portuguese appetizers that you know we feature here in the restaurant. That's amazing. It's really good food. So now getting back to Shea, another one of the uh, Subway Series games. This was like a, a Sunday night game. I would say, um, geez, Piazza is still on the team. I would say it's probably around 2001, 2002. So it's a Sunday night game. The Yankees get off to like a great lead. Uh, like Bernie Williams hit up like two home runs or something like that. The Yankees are ahead like 10 to two. So we're like, all right, yeah, it's good. Let's leave. So yeah, we park a few blocks away from Shade under the, under the highway. I mean, we parked the cars under there. That's where we headed back to the car. But as we're going down the, the area, we hear like the crowd cheering. We hear the cheer, like, why are people cheering? It doesn't make sense, it doesn't make sense. By the time, it's a true story, by the time we leave the stadium and get near the car, there's a hot dog vendor there on the corner still with a little radio. And he's kind of like, you saw, we had a Yankee shirt on. He's kind of like, you know, snicking around us. Like, well, what are you talking about? It's like, you guys just lost the game. What do you mean? The, the Mets just came roaring back, like the eighth and ninth inning, scored like eight or nine runs. And we're like, wow. And just like that, just lost the game. So remember David Wright uh, double off of uh, Mariano. Remember that game as well. In the 06 year that we that we made the playoffs. That was the that was like the put it in the books game or something like that. It was, uh, Johnson started that game actually too. I always remember that. Uh, Randy Johnson. Well, yeah, I remember that. And you guys had like uh, first inning came up and scored like four runs. I don't remember who it was. Like one of the bad starting pitcher that we had it was just like coming in and. And we're, I mean, in my mind, we lost this Randy Johnson, and we just came back in the bottom of the first, in the top of the first, and also scored a Beltran, hit a three run shot mm. off Beltran, and we just right back in the game, and it was at that back and forth game, and in the end, uh, you guys had a lead, and uh, uh, David Wright hit a double off of Mariano to win the game. Remember that game? So. I'm going to look center field, it's kind of whatever the center yep. field's head dropped uh, in there. Johnny Damon. I yeah. think Johnny Damon was the Probably, center yeah. fielder. He was like, um, probably, um, at that point, his probably his wheels were kind of shot a little bit, but yeah. No, still mid. Yeah, yeah still. It would have been a hot play. So I think with that one, because the ball the way ball was hit, him as um, having the glove on the right hand, he couldn't like get across his body. Like like back in the day, I think Bernie could have gone back yeah. and got it, but. but that's you know, another tough one for me at City Field was um, oh uh, it was a, it was a it was a game I think Yan Yankees were ahead like two nothing. It was like it was a it was a Sunday game and Marianne, I think it was one with uh, Daniel Murphy. 
hit, hit a, a, a double of a Mariano, okay. blew, blew the game. So yeah, I've been to a couple of couple of you know, blown games there. I've also been some games the other way. It was a great one. It was a night game. I think when the, I think it was Sayeto. The Mets had Sayeto. It was like a, a Korean pitcher. Okay. Well, for initially, I think Benitez blew the game initially. Oh. So he had like Marcus Timms 0-2. No, Benitez blew a game now. What, what a shocker. Hand Marcus Timms 0-2. Timms somehow fought out and like got like um, got, a, got a single out of it somehow. And ended up in second base. And then same thing. Jita got up eventually. Benitez had him down like 0-2. Benita and somehow Jita blue, blue hit got got uh, Tim's in, so tied the game. Met fans were all pissed off at Benitez, of course, and they go into extra innings. And the guy Saito, um, he was like a kind of like a Korean pitcher. Valentine bought him out. It was a tie game. Robin Ventura, when he was with the Yankees, up Ventura hits a home run. It must be like a tenth inning, something like that. Yeah. Go ahead, and you know, of course, Met fans were all pissed off. The cream of the crop for me, my birthday. No, that's why I'm never gonna forget this. June 12, 2009. Alex Rodriguez mm. get a pop up, and of course Luis Castillo did not make it. Now, were you at that game? It. No, I it was, was. It was my birthday. It was actually June 12. That's what I always remember. I was. Now we were having a celebration at home, and I'm kind of back and forth watching the game. Oh, they're gonna win in my birthday. Great. You know, and a pop up. Alex, yeah, we're gonna win, and he drops it, and you know, we all know what happened. So it's funny. Enough, I had an episode like a year or two called my top 10 Yankee Stadium moments. That was one of them. I was sitting there, I was in section 315 actually. My first year I had tickets at the newest state, we were in 315. So he hits the pop up a mile high. Wall walking out. I was like, oh, I forget, He's, they're gonna lose. Wall walking out. But for some reason, I just see Castillo like, struggling a little bit. And like, I kept turning around, turning around. I was like, he's not gonna make this. Drops, place explodes. Yeah. Teixeira scored. Cause, well, good thing about Teixeira, I mean, uh, that, that was the whole thing. I think he was like on first base or something. He scored that, that um, that winning run. If he was just like your typical player jogging, that would have never happened. But he actually hustled around. Boom, the Yankees win. And yeah, yeah, obviously it was a tough. Yeah, that and was it was a tough mean, season for the Mets a little bit. 09 because they had the you know oh, the, it was it was the first the year of stadium the field exactly. And, you know everybody couldn't hit the ball out and they had to bring defenses in and David Wright had a horrible year and all that. Yeah, one of the. I know, especially especially after the two collapses. Mm. It was the 07, 08 collapses, you know, we had leads in the September and we just totally Throwing blew blown. it. That was so. like the Billy Wagner and the other fails. But thanks for having us. I mean, just these two appetizers alone are amazing. I'm sure the menu is loaded with awesome stuff. My so, pleasure. So again, tell us where people can find you. In uh, we're in Summit, uh, 10 Bank Street. Um, we're open seven days a week, 11.30 to 9 uh, and 9.30 on Fridays and Saturdays. Um, follow us on Facebook. Sarah Restaurant, Instagram, Sarah Summit, uh, and just come and have a meal with us. Good luck, sir. Got my personal guarantee. Um, I don't have any money. <laughs> <laughs>